अब्दुल कुमार सिंह को डाल दिया डाल दिया डाल दिया डाल दिया डाल दिया वेलकम बैक इन दिस सेशन वी गोइंग बी टॉकिंग अबाउट डिजाइनिंग एन इफेक्टिव एंड सस्टेनेबल वाटर एंड वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट वाटर वेस्ट मैन वेस्ट वाटर मैनेजमेंट फॉर थर्मल पावर प्लांट्स A thermal power plant CPP need to manage water risk by deploying the right strategies and solutions, such that the plant acquires uh, nat water neutral or water positive status. This means that the plant gives back to the ecosystem more or the same water than what it extracted and consumed in the first place. Of course, this is no mean task. There are multiple wastewater streams in DPPs like boiler blowdown, ash handling plant, raw water treatment plant, and many more. Water from these streams can be treated and reused for firefighting, toilet flushing, cooling tower makeup, and more. And there are many technologies and solutions which are available, like water scarer system for real-time monitoring of uh, distributed water usage, ash water recirculation, high CFCS CW system. So, uh, how to design an effective and sustainable water and wastewater management system for thermal power plants? This is what we're going to discuss in this session. Please welcome our esteemed speakers who will be discussing this issue. We have Mr. P K Bandhu, Head Environment, Methan Park, Tara Park, uh, Mr. Anshuman, Associate Director, Terry, Mr. R R Patel, Senior Manager, G I P C L, Mr. Mukul Singh, Head of Environment, Joyopura uh, Power, Tara Park. And uh, Mr. Sam Devdas, head of the Parking JSW Group, who will be speaking uh, on this. Now, uh, I see that we have uh, uh, Mr. Mukul Singh with us right now. Mr. Singh, uh, uh, if you can hear me, I request you to please let on on your uh, audio and video, and uh, you can uh, start with your presentation. Okay, thank you, and. I request you to turn your video on as well, Mr. Singh. Mr. Singh, I request you to please uh, turn on your video so that we can see you. Uh, is it visible? Yes. Please, please go ahead, Mr. Singh. Okay, good morning. Thank you, Mr. Energy, for giving me the opportunity to share our some of the best best practices in our thermal plant. From our childhood days, we used to learn that two third of the earth surface is water and one third is land. We were happy that we have plenty of water with us. But however, later we came to know that. 97% of this water is lying in seas and 2% is in the form of snow in glaciers and only 1% is available for us for use in as a fresh water and out of this 1% available fresh water in india's case more than 80 to 85% is being used in agriculture and rest 10 to 15% is used by industries there was an industry uh, there was an study on water used by different industries and we can see that industrial use is highly imbalanced and thermal power sector is using almost 87% of the water fresh water in india 
as we know that energy is the basic requirement of humans so it becomes important to optimize the water use in thermal power plants there is another aspect also as we know due to global warming we know the glaciers are melting and due to increase in sea level there is a threat of drowning of coastal cities and to contain the global warming below 2 degree celsius as compare, compared to pre industrial level there was an agreement in paris that is cop 21 which was agreed by almost 119 countries in in the cop 21 to reduce the impact of global warming there was some commitment from india apart from reducing the greenhouse gases india agreed to increase the non fossil uh, non fossil fuel power capacity to 40% from existing 28% as per 2015 by 2030 and as the share of renewable energy increases we know that water used by industry in thermal power plant will come a uh, will decrease also and as a tata power almost 33% of our current portfolio of energy power generation comes from the renewable sources already there was a study by world research institute washington based institute it is and there are some interesting facts regarding the water used in thermal power plants as we know that water is used in thermal power plant for steam generation cooling and as disposal these are these are the major areas of use and 40% of india's thermal power plants are in water scarce areas threatening shutdowns one more thing that 90% of india's thermal power plants which provide the country the most of its electricity rely on fresh water for cooling 40% uh, okay and 70% of indian thermal plants will increase competition by 2030 that these are the findings of the study done by world research research institute some years ago this is a map showing the thermal power plants based on type of cooling method it is is used and the water stress area of india and we see many thermal power plants these these areas are having water stress stress area once through cooling is being adopted in many thermal power plants in water stress areas also in the dark brown areas very late our ministry of environment forest and climate change came with a notification which regulated the water use in thermal power plants based on and also it says that all plants which once through cooling has to convert to cooling tower based system and 3.5 cubic meter per megawatt water should be achieved within a period of 2 years this notification came in 2015 new plants for, for the new plants this uh, limit is 2.5 cubic meter per megawatt hour and also zero liquid discharge to be achieved these are the findings uh, these are the notification came in 2015 now let us have a slight introduction of our tata power business in jamshedpur uh, jamshedpur tata power company limited started its operation in 1997 by acquiring a 67.5 megawatt coal based power captive power plant of tata steel and thereafter we added four more units one after another as per the requirement of tata steel in our jojobera division there is a complex business structure as 
unit 1 and 4 are captive units unit 2 3 are ipps and unit 5 is uh, joint venture of tata steel and tata power we take the water from the swanrekha river through tata steel tata steel utility and infrastructure services there is a separate small company made by tata steel which looks after the water and energy requirements of the city, Jamsetpur city. Previously, it was known as Jusko. So we purchased the water from TSUIS. The water rate has increased almost five times in last five years. It is almost 25 cubic meter per uh, 25 rupees per cubic meter. We are purchasing from Tata Steel. These are the, this is the source of water. They are used as points in Jojovera power plant. Mainly the water, 80, 80, 80 to 85 percent water is used in cooling towers and it's, it is lost in evaporation loss. And rest, almost 20, 15 to 20 percent is used in service water that let is for as management, DM, DM plant washing, drinking water, and fire hydrant use, and other areas. Now let us come to the best practices we are following in Jojovera power plant. In Jojovera power plant, we are using the domestic coal. It is having high ash content of almost 30 to 50 percent. As we know, uh, who are the people who are engaged in, engaged with thermal power plants, they know that almost 80% ash is, as is collected in dry form and it is used in different cement plants for making cements. And But 20% is collected in wet form. And this 20% bottom ash is conveyed to ash ponds by hydraulic means. In, the, in our ash pond, which is located almost one to uh, one to two kilometer away from the, our plant, we have two concrete ponds, one settling pond. One pond is in service and another is under evacuation. Water used in wet ash conveying is used after for further access conveying after settling in ponds. So we have the ash water recycling system. We are reusing all the water which is used for ash conveying again and again. This is one of the best practices of Jojovera power plant. Another is effluent treatment plant. We have installed effluent treatment plant in 2011. Almost 100 cubic meter per hour is the capacity. There also have, we have three number of concrete ponds of capacity 10 to 8,000 to 10,000 cubic meter. All the wastewater of the plant is collected in this pond and after treatment, effluent treatment plant, all the wastewater is reused for different uses like as well, a makeup in as water system, water sprinkling, etc. We have developed JLD in 2011 and declared our plant as JLD. We are not discharging a single drop of water to outside drains. There is a small graph showing the quantum of water used for last four, five, four years. Almost four to five lakh cubic meter of water we are using through our effluent treatment plants. We have also installed a sewage treatment plant in 2015 and later the CA has come with a guideline that in thermal power plants almost 30 percent water to be used for from STP. We have a small STP in our premises and we are reusing this STP discharge water as cooling water which was guided as by CA. Another best practice, we have high concentration slide disposal system also. As the lean slurry system where we are conveying the ash to ash ponds, 
by hydraulic means almost 20 to 30 percent ash and remaining water is used to carry a, to transfer the ash from bottom ash hopper to the ash ponds. It has its disadvantage that higher amount of water is lost. We have come to know some news for last two, three years. There was a ash pond collapse in many thermal power plants. Vast land is required for ash dikes. Big ponds has to be made. And other and the power consumption related issues for running the recovery system. A CST system operates at higher concentration of almost 60%. Thereby water consumption is drastically reduced and li literally no water is released at the disposal area. The ash slide disposal takes place in this SCSD system. The ash water slurry is disposed on slope based system that was developed for the designer. We are not concerned much, but this SCSD system is helping us very much. We have also installed many rooftop rainwater harvesting systems. As we, as you can see in the uh, pictures, we have connected all the rooftops, which is near cooling water system to the cooling tower bay. There is initial flushing in the start of rainy rain, rain season and thereafter all the rains falling on the rooftop gets directly reused in cooling water system. And apart from this, we have also installed rainwater harvesting from groundwater recharge also. We are collecting the rainwater in separate ponds and we are using it later also. So we, we are trying to capture as much rainwater we are getting in our premises and reuse it as fresh makeup. This is another best practice we are adopting at Jojovera power plant. We know that 80 to 85 percent water which is used in a thermal power plant, especially in Jojovera power plant, is evaporated in cooling towers. Many research is going on to recover this evaporated water. However, there is no concrete solution for this yet. And COC is the cycle of concentration of cooling water. How many cycles the water runs thereafter it gets lost to atmosphere. An improvement of COC has huge, huge potential of water saving by implementing the real time quality, water quality monitoring and monitoring based cooling chemical dosing. We are able to improve the COC of cooling water system without compromising the performance of heat transfer systems in cooling towers or in condenser. There is a calculation. This is the in Jojobera. By improving one COC, we can save more than 4 lakh cubic meter of fresh water requirement for cooling. This is as per the calculation based on evaporation rate, circulation ratio, uh, circulation rate, and drift loss, and all has been taken in the calculation. This is the COC trend of last four or five years, and we have in, improved from 2016-17 to 2019-20. Thereafter, last year there was some up and down, but we have we are constantly improved. Actually, the cooling towers are designed for five to six COC, and thereafter improving from that level, it requires efforts and no doubt cost also. This is the base. These are some of the um, uh, further best practices that many initiatives are taken to stop the water leaks from valves. Actually, we ignore the small leakages, but these leakages also contribute to the consumption of water. Firefighting horses, underground firefighting lines. We had underground firefighting lines which was installed 20 years ago, and there were so many leakages inside underground and we are we were unable to repair it so we decided to bring the underground firefighting system to the overground 
and also providing bulk of float system to the overhead tanks where overflow is taking place and we come to know sometime and many much of the water gets lost this is also best practices of water management that the specific dm water consumption has also been reduced year by year by better chemistry con control and reducing leaks there we in the thermal power plants a small leakage in the steam system whether it is in the steam side or water side it contributes to the total water consumption we are monitoring the dm water consumption drinking water consumption everything means in every small aspect of water consumption we have we are having our control and we are trying many we are taking many initiatives like i can say a share a small uh, example in the drinking water system we had uh, our jojobera power plant is a, in a small plant but we had provided almost 150 number of drinking water taps in the plant area no doubt if availability is easy then misusing also starts people started misusing thereafter we came to when we came to know that in the jojobera almost 120 130 cubic meter of water is drinking water is used then we started the campaign to reduce it by plugging some drinking water points putting right. it before the high usage areas in canteens or workers area like many type of controls we started implementing and later we can see in the graphs that it started reducing year by year right uh, mr singh uh, the efforts made by you and the are uh, are remarkable i would like you to please wrap up your presentation uh, we have many speakers on stage who would like to and a awareness to stakeholders this, this is also one of the this is the key initiative for water conservation we put the slogans posters we in the meetings with the contract workmen actually the number of permanent employees almost 150 to 200 but contract workers many contract workmen comes and educating them about the water conservation is also the key for reducing this water wastage or misuse and we have a uh, shared our best practices for water conservation conservation at different forums of pollution boards uh, in the programs organized by pollution control boards moef and other regulatory agencies apart from these initiatives which i have tried to list it we have taken many more initiatives to reduce the water consumption like maximize the dry fly ash utilization whatever the fly ash is collected 80% jo ash is collected in dry form we try to utilize most or 100% in the dry form otherwise we have to carry it to the ash pond by water by hydro, hydro, hydraulically also we are trying to procure low ash coal so that the whole ash content of generation is reduced mr singh i would initiate initiatives we took was in the winter season when weather conditions are favorable we tried to stop one cooling tower fans like in the winter six cooling tower fans are running and we see that that whole temperature is down so no stop one fan and keep the unit running with five city fans only in ac system we started air cooled ac system there we found in the some areas ac is running and it is running on once through cooling water system cooling system water cooling system the way we replaced it it with air cooled and many more sir many more initiatives a small initiatives like in the annual shutdown when we have to clean the city basin 
uh, in spite of throwing it out we started using it another cooling tower by pumping this water so many initiatives initiatives were taken in at jojomera power plants to reduce the water consumption this is the graph showing the journey our journey at jojomera power plant in 2011 12 it was 3.4 and presently in the last 3 months it is running at 2.28 cubic meter per megawatt hour and with these best practices and initiatives we are able to not only reduce the water consumption specific water consumption of jojomera year by year but to sustain at well below the statutory limit of 3.5 cubic meter per megawatt hour which is applicable to our plant thank you if there is any suggestion or uh, query we are eager to answer thank you mr singh for your presentation i uh, i would request the participants in case you have any questions please raise your hand we'll invite you on stage to the end of the session to ask your questions to our speakers uh, mr singh thank you so much for your presentation i would now request uh, uh, our next speaker to please go ahead i would request uh, mr r r patel uh, to please uh, go ahead with his presentation mr r r patel the senior manager at gipcl mr patel you can uh, start your uh, audio and your video and then you can uh, go ahead with the presentation yes mr patel we can see you and we can hear you you can start uh, your screen sharing and uh, begin with your presentation Yes. Good morning to everyone. Am I audible? Yes, Mr. Patil. We can hear you. Please yes. go ahead. We can see you as well. Share that again. Okay. I'm just screen sharing that. Good morning to everybody. My presentation is uh, on the screen. How are you looking? Hello. Can you continue? I request you to please wrap it up in twenty-five minutes. Thank you. Okay. What our topic is water conservation and optimization of in thermal power station. Water conservation is essential. Water conservation is essential for everyone and today's need. Due to water conservation, it prevents the depletion of natural resources. From the images, it is clearly indicated that it will be helpful for the maintaining the good environment. Fresh water is available for the community, and thus save the money. From this picture, from this picture, you can see the. Uh, orientation of this picture it is available save save the water it will be beneficial to future generation and current generation and it will be maintain the good environment and save the money next slide is water is a unique resource because water is act as a coolant it can carry large amount of the heat per unit volume excellent carrier of the nutrient it is having high latent of evaporation rate it's cool cools down quickly and heat up slowly so water is a unique statistic availability of the water and its uses only 3% of the fresh water is available in the whole world for the human daily basis use so we have to respect more from the picture it is clearly indicated that 97% saline water is available fresh water is 3% this bifurcate it is 68% ice ice cap and glaciers ground water 31.1% and other is 0.9% so surface water is also bifurcate it is 87% lakes and river 
two percent and swamp is eleven percent. So from the statistic uses of water, agriculture and forestry, thirty one percent water is used fresh water. Energy twenty six percent, industry ninety percent, transport thirteen percent, and residential and common building eight percent. from this it is clearly indicated that we have to conserve the water and optimize the uses of the water what is water conservation to manage the natural resource of fresh water there are some of the policies are defined strategies and activities which is help to protect the hydrosphere and meet the current and future demand that is the that is the requirement today factors such as climate change have increased the pressures on the natural resources on manufacturing and agriculture education major benefits of water conservation assurance of the availability of the fresh water assurance of the availability of the fresh water in sustainable manner for future generation and decreases or reduce the pressure to withdraw the new water from the environment energy conservation is also done energy conservation is carried out by siphoning the siphoning process conveyance and waste water treatment consume lot of energy to treat the waste water in certain districts in the world it is observed that 15% of complete power utilization to treat the waste water so we if we generate less waste water we can also conserve the energy it will also help to save to new territories for neighborhood natural life and moving water flow and quality conflict over the water to access, to access the water resources conflicts occur between the countries states and group over the years though rarely are traditional wars waged over the water alone so water is historically been source of tension and factor of conflicts however water conflict appear for several resources it include territorial disputes fights for resource reuse of water after after the treatment so water is a big factor for conflict so thus this waste water globally treated and it its use after the adopting the tertiary treatment in agriculture education 32% it is utilized industrial 19.3% environment enhancer 8% landscaping and irrigation 20% so this is the general overview for water optimization and this uh, conservation in our plant gujarat industries power company limited it is an ims company having quality management system environment management system oceas and energy management system gipcl has gas based power plant solar power plant hydro power plant and a thermal waste power plant and its own captive lignite and lime mines at gipcl what are the practices best practices adopted to conserve the water and optimization use of water we have adopted zero liquid discharge facility in our plant since 2000 there is no fresh water or waste water is being discharged outside the boundary of the plant and colony in our plant fresh water is taken from tapi river which is 18 kilometers away from the plant the waste water or uh, waste water generated mostly from the cooling water cooling tower blowdowns which is treated by adopting different technologies in in our plant to achieve the zero discharge facility we have installed etp plant effluent treatment plant in the effluent treatment plant we are collecting all the waste water 
which is having two compartment and capacity is 3400 meter cube in the inlet and outlet there is a flow meter was installed to monitor the waste water and 2 into 100% uh, waste disposal pumps also installed in the guard pond what are the practices adopted in our plant cooling tower blow down water of phase 1 generated about 98% we are adopting the primary treatment through guard pond which is utilized in lignite handling system spring or sprinkling on the lignite stock pile and also use fire hydrant system reduction of water consumption is achieved by increasing the cycles of concentration in the cooling water system by adopting the proprietary dosing chemicals into the cooling water system this will be give the lot of uh, conservation of water by increasing the concentration of cycle in the cooling water blow down water from the boilers which is also diverted into the guard pond and adopted the primary treatment after that it is utilized in the fire hydrant system and lignite handling system blow down water from the clarifier and side stream filtration which is treated to thickener and centrifuge and then after that it is utilized in the cooling water system as a makeup surface water is generated in the plant due to plant area cleaning it is collected into lignite runoff pond this is lignite runoff pond is a high rate solid contact clarifier where we are adopting the primary treatment after primary treatment it is used as a makeup water in the cooling water system all generated effluent from the pits storm water drains and ice handling system it is retreated and used in the cooling water makeup system we have also having a rain water harvesting system which is having four number of step well two in the plant and two in the colony premises to increase the water levels what are the advantages at slpp for what uh, in slpp cost benefit of the waste water recycling is there with positive effect with payback period of 2 2.3 years we have connected this waste water discharge into the fire hydrant system and and it is a, give the good benefit and we are operating the fire hydrant system more efficiently and trouble free without any scale corrosion microbiological growth microbiological growth and the fouling a total water saving potential was about 20% of total intake of the fresh entire water says save the energy which is required for the heat treat and pumping the water prevent the depletion of natural resource by rain water harvesting system protecting the drinking water resource maintain the surrounding ambient of water air quality also in our plant dm water consumption per year 2.07 2021 1.46 1920 raw water consumption in the plant meter cube per megawatt 2.2 2.07 1920 and 1820 1819 1.96 total generated waste water in slpp surat lignite power plant that is i have given the statistic water collection from the different plant area peat and surface drain collected in the guard pond and after treatment this water is used in the fire water system dust suppression system gardening system it is around 100 meter cube per day in 2021 1920 to 85 meter cube per day in 1819 19 meter cube per day blow down effluent from the cooling towers it is 3695 meter cube per day 1920 3437 meter cube per day and uh, 1819 3436 in the demineralization plant we are generating the effluent about 100 meter cube per day and lignite runoff pond system it is 25 meter cube in 2021 1920 10 meter cube and 1819 12 meter cube only 
स्ट्रॉन्ग वॉटर ड्रेन हंड्रेड मीटर क्यूब ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन नाइनटीन मीटर क्यूब नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी एंड एटीन नाइनटीन इट इज नाइनटी मीटर क्यूब सो टोटल जनरेटेड वेस्ट वॉटर इफ लिंग यूटिलाइज इन द प्लांट इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द डिफरेंट लोकेशन फोर जीरो टू जीरो इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन थ्री सेवन टू टू नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी एंड एटीन नाइनटीन थ्री सेवन टू एट so these these are the statistic only so fresh water utilization after work done this water is utilized in the in the cooling water system as a makeup water system this fresh service water is utilized in the ash handling air compressor after work done after work done it is reutilized in the cooling water system as a makeup system makeup water in the financial year 2021 2000 meter cube per day is generated 1920 it is 1800 meter cube and 1890 1900, 1900 meter cube from the side stream filtration and blow down water it is total fresh water generated 2410 2021 2190 1920 2300 1819 this all these generated waste effluent directly utilized in the cooling water system these are the only statistic data so treated waste water utilization in different location in the plant water sprinkling over mining hall roads we are utilizing around 1206 meter cube per day in 2021 financial year 1920 1117 meter cube in the financial year 1819 it is 1118 meter cube so around 30% of the treated waste water is utilized in the water sprinkling area for the dust separation system at lignite handling system we are using 16% of the water gardening system we are using 30% of the generated waste water and plant area washing it is treated it is utilizing 20 to 23% and fire hydrant system it is 2 to 2% only so total fresh water utilization on an average is 3800 meter cube per day we are analyzing the outlet water quality on monthly basis from third party which is defined by the central pollution control board or state pollution control board on monthly basis these are the parameters we are analyzing on monthly basis all the parameters are well within limit not having much more difference gip shell we have are you able to dekhai jana dal the chalo chan this guard pond water after treating adopting the primary treatment we are utilize in the fire hydrant system in efficient way there is no problem for the operating system not observe the corrosion scaling and the choking this is the effective idea to reutilize the waste water in the hydrant system which is blended with the, some part of the water in the service water it has improved the ambient air quality due to dust suppression reducing the land pollution due to zero liquid discharge resulting in the better way water management system and with additional benefit of energy conservation and environment conservation use of waste water in fire hydrant system is a unique feature which other plant may implement we got the best we got the best best prize first first prize in first prize in water use by center for science and environment green rating project award in on february 2050 gipcl total water conservation per year total fresh water reutilization saving per day sorry 2410 meter cube total treated effluent per day 4020 so total fresh water saving is 6445 meter cube 
in 2021 so total water saving per annum 23 lakh 52425 meter cube in 2021 in financial year 1920 21000 21 lakh 57880 in the 1819 it is 22 lakh 220 water saving was carried out total fresh water utilization in the financial year 2021 total water saving in the financial year 2021 is 7.35 crore 1926 0.16 crore 1819 5.7 crore so total 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 cost saving water last 3 years is 19.22 crore thank you thank you mr patel uh, for your presentation um there are a few questions that are coming up uh, and uh, we had a few people raising their hands as well we we'll take these questions once uh, all the uh, presentations are done i would request uh, mr bandhu mr pk bandhu to please uh, start with his presentation uh, mr bandhu would request you to please uh, uh, start your uh, audio and uh, your video and you can start with your presentation Mr. Bandhu, we can hear you, uh, but we are unable to see you. If you could just turn on your camera. Yes, we can see you now, Mr. Bandhu. Uh, <coughs> If you can start good the morning. presentation. Good uh, morning. Good morning to everybody. Uh, myself, P K Bandhu from. Uh, Mython Power Limited. It's a joint venture company of Tata Power and Damodar Valley Corporation. And our plant capacity is 1,050 megawatt. Uh, we have a two in two into two uh, 525 megawatt plant. This plant is already certified with the uh, since beginning. Uh, it is already certified with the ISO 9000, 2008, ISO 14000, ISO 18000. and others uh, so ems certificate also still nahi aa raha sir jo nahi aa raha still nahi so now our oh, screen screen sir would request you to please share your presentation uh you would see a arrow button uh, at the bottom of the screen just press that and you can start your screen sharing bol do bol Uh, please share the screen. Please share the screen. Uh, so you have to present yourself and share your screen and share your presentation. On the bottom of uh, this screen, your own video, you will see one button which has an arrow, uh, an arrow button. It is a present to audience uh, uh, tab. If you could press that and start with your presentation. ओके आई एम शेयरिंग जस्ट वेट सेकंड Is the screen visible now? Yes, sir. We can see your screen. Please go okay. full screen and start okay. your presentation. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, good morning once again. That uh, this is the my this uh, myself P K Bandhu from Mython Power Limited. It's a joint venture company of Tata Power and the Damodar Valley Corporations. Uh, here is the install capacity of thousand fifty megawatt. We have a plant of Uh, two into five hundred twenty-five megawatt install capacity. Then it is already the the uh, <coughs> this company is being certified by the ISO or nine thousand one, fourteen thousand, eighteen thousand, etc. 
so now the unique things are coming there the the since beginning that the jharkhand pollution control board had certified that the, this is the first gdl plant uh, in the jharkhand state and in since 2012 uh, this plant was installed in two phases first in uh, Uh, in the uh, year of 2011 and second unit commissioned in the 2012 and after that it is certified in the jdlb there's that certificate certificate is attached here with this this is the basic there are some basic uh, uh, design uh, parameters are is being displayed here that there are the two boilers and dm water makeup quantity etc blow down quantity he or mentioned here so now we are showing that the source of uh now we are showing the the our water flow diagram so the it is the we are uh, sourcing water from the mython reservoir that there is a, a big dam uh, on the river of the baraka river and we are sourcing water from that river and this is the water that we are uh, pre treatment is being done then the water is uh, ready for use in the other purposes for making dm water cooling water and service water system also which includes the ash water later i will show so, so this is the water balance <coughs> mapping that we have done in the beginning of uh, uh, starting our process that this losses in the different places that we and we calculated in the beginning and then we started the optimizations hmm, in different area one by one so now in this the the i have uh, uh, this is a the specific raw water consumption in this plant and this is uh, this is uh, directly proportional to the uh, plant load factor so we we have achieved so i i i wanted to show there the 3.5 a uh, liter per kilowatt hour which is standard by the new water uh, new environment norms and that is with related to i assume that the 85% pla and in 85% pla that is that somebody says that we have also achieved the 2.1 liter per kilowatt hour this is our best figure and plant average 75% PLF that is 2.26 liter per kilowatt hour to 2.32 liter per kilowatt hour depend as the PLF has uh, uh, reduced and we are maintaining the uh, still uh, the, saving the water uh, as much as possible and uh, we achieved that benchmark level i think in the 500 megawatt regime so i can show you some previous data before we starting the benchmarking that we collected data from the different power plant is mentioned the ntpc bar ntpc talcher and ntpc shipot so these are the figure in the 2012 to 2007 and 17 and we 2017 so we achieved the 2.26 uh, liter per kilowatt hour so or you can say meter cube per megawatt hour so now the optimizations that we have <coughs> categorized optimizations in the three places so one is the cooling tower second one is the dm plant generations and reduction of the effluent generation third one the uh, as uh, use of the waste water reuse and recycle or use of the waste water so the dm plant generations that regular so we are this graph is showing that the reduction of the effluent generations how it is possible how this has been possible this is this has been possible because that regular maintenance practice and second one is the uh, renewal of the uh, timely renewal of the resins uh, and you uh, reducing the backwashing quantity and <clears throat> this is another uh, because the dm wash and generation has been reduced because the, the process waste uh, blow down waste the boiler water chemistry was maintained so stringently so the process uh, blow down water requ uh, required is very less so that the dm water generation is also reduced and the dm plant effluent generation is also reduced so the water consumption has been 
uh, reduced. Second, that the <coughs> initiatives for the water consumption, the raw water consumption, 2.37 megawatt MOEF, 3.4 on the basis of that at 75%, less than 75% PLA. So this is very important that somebody is saying that 2.1 we achieve, we have also achieved 2.1 at 95 percent PLA and if the, at the PLA is reduction that power plant uh, I think this is the baseline is the, uh, at present because of the renewal, renewal energy uh, are very playing very much role uh, so the thermal power plant uh, PLA is reducing so maintaining that uh, uh, be less than three or uh, standard, so it is very important. So we are still maintaining the 2.2, 2.3 uh, meter cube per megawatt hour. Then we are also, we uh, I wanted to mention that this is the first plant in Eastern India that has set up that hero system. Hero means that a high efficiency reverse osmosis system. So this is that cooling tower, entire cooling tower, process waste water, cooling tower, entire blow down. We are again processing in the uh, reverse osmosis system and reusing. This hero system efficiency is 95% and, and only the 5% reject water. That reject water we are using for the moisturization of the ash which we are going for disposal into the uh, 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 mines. Uh, void. So, so there is a there is uh, the hundred percent balance is here in the wastewater that we are not uh, this uh, draining any water. So there is you you can see there is the uh, buffer pit that any process water should not go outside the plant. So it is collected in this system and it is recycled through this RO and it, which is not required to RO, then it is directly uh, after treatment directly used in the used in the service water system. We have the clarifier system for the recovery system, recovery water as water recovery, which is going to as pond occasionally. So that is we also again treating and taking back into the system. So we have the uh, neutralizing feed in the uh, in DM plan system that we are. Uh, neutralizing the DM plum wastewater and reuse into the again system. And we are also having the central monitoring basins for uh, collecting the plant wastewater and after treatment that is again used in the process. So this is entirely uh, that the wastewater system management system. <coughs> so all the pictures are, uh, we are also, there is another unique system. If the drains, uh, is the uh, surface drains, the accumulated some water, that we are also pumping and using for the uh, gardening purpose. So there is the, <coughs> so you can see that the, we have the tow drain. So which are the, to the these tow drains are collecting water and again recycle into the system. And the, the some portion of the water we are using for the uh, sprinkling system in the as, as uh, handling system and as well as in the coal handling system to arrest, uh, to reduce the figurative dust emissions as well as the uh, coal, uh, reduce the coal loss. So this is the, we are using the wastewater system. You can see the picture that there is a, uh, rainwater harvesting system that is we have in the implemented harvesting uh, rainwater harvesting system implemented since the beginning of the plant and 100 persons we are capturing we have also the one another unique system that we are you and so this is that the night vision camera is there that's showing that the plant drain that there is a uh, zero liquid uh, discharge uh, evidence through the uh, uh, through then there is uh, uh, it is uh, we are it is connected to the CPCB and Jharkhand Pollution Control Board also. So one one more that a unique system is there that uh, we are uh, uh, using that all STP waters hmm, 
or STP waters into the our uh, uh, main main uh, service water system. So and also for sometimes we are using for the gardening and uh, uh, plantations area uh, also. So the process improvement that has been done through the, the arresting of the regular maintenance of the plant, uh, which minimizes the high pressure steam leakage in the external in, uh, into ambient. Then the, uh, there are uh, other uh, in the boiler blowdown, the uh, boiler water chemistry that has been maintained very nicely then so that the boiler blowdown requirement is low. So, and uh, by this way that the uh, total processed water uh, 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 drainage or process uh, process waste water amount has been reduced and if everything has been captured and uh, we are recirculating into the system second one is the cooling tower system cooling tower blowdown that is we have with the reverse osmosis system that we are capturing it 100 percent and we are recycling into the system third one that we are also now we are uh, we have a project to uh, uh, take care of the surface drainage water. You know that the most of the rain water are flowing through the river and going into the uh, going into the, the sea, mix up with the sea water. So we are trying to capture the our plant premises that surface water. We are we have we are trying to bore <coughs> boring in the various places and recharging into the groundwater. Uh, the, through the different pits and that initiative has taken and um, Python Power Limited show that <coughs> we have received the different um, various award mm. so the, the flyers utilizations award by the 2021 in mission energy we have received the Tata Power internal highest award the Vishamitra Regionance Award also in the same year with the Tata Power, ICC Environment Excellence Award, MPL has awarded the five star uh, rating of the JSPCB for best environment management, uh, which is depends on the, I, I will show you, uh, the Green Maple Foundation Award, Environment Management Award from the Jharkhand Pollution Control Board in several years. And in the beginning, we have also received the Center of Excellence Award. So now you see the, the five star award here. So for that we have installed that it is it is because of the quality of data and availability of the data of emissions into the uh, Jharkhand Pollution Control Board uh, office as well as the CPCB. So the, we have also installed the data logger that uh, the, you, uh, rarely it will be found in the power plant, the data logger uh, uh, system has installed. The, yeah, we have, so there, there was a chance of the manipulations of the data in the through server system. So that is why we installed the data logger and we have awarded five star and it is still being maintained. So, <coughs> and these are the various uh, awards are here. Uh, I wanted to mention here that again that uh, we have also that taken the initiatives of the your uh, UNSDG goals, UNSDG goals index that the first one is that the decarbonization that decarbonization means that the Tata power is going to phasing out the thermal power plant and giving the same quantity of the renewable energy. So these decarbonization, one way it will be held to the uh, water neutrality also. Hmm. The, this discuss, SDG <coughs> water neutrality also. That SDG goal 12, 13 uh, is uh, we are uh, incorporated in our system and uh, seven also. So these three are we are uh, adopted uh, in our plan to for optimizations of the natural resources of the uh, decarbonizations water neutrality uh, to, to obtain within the 2050 so <clears throat> this is 
this is in nutshell uh, i wanted to uh, uh, give thanks to the mission energy mission mission i want to give the thanks to mission energy and uh, uh, mission energy organizations for giving the opportunity to uh, show the best practices of the mython power limited uh, the, which is one of the uh, we can say the one of the be, uh, best plant uh, uh, as a zero liquid and water balance system thank you thank you mr bandu for your presentation uh, uh, it's very insightful a lot of people will have lot to pick up from uh, the best practices that you have followed i have now request um, anshuman uh, who is uh, associate director tedi to please uh, go ahead with this presentation i would request the other speakers to please mute themselves if a, if any questions and queries that i can i do i am ready to answer uh, so the our initiatives and drives uh, which are uh, help us to reducing the water uh, consumption in our plant mm. in various type and also mm. that set up of 87 crore plant for uh, recycling the process water na uh, and reusing it and waste water we are using for the as what as system right uh, mr right. bandhu right now we have to see any questions uh, so i would request uh, mr anshuman to give us his presentation if there are questions we expect it for the end of the session we we'll take them up thank you so thank much you. Uh, mr bandhu thank you thank you anisha shall i start yes uh, anshuman please go ahead uh, i hope uh, the uh, the presentation is visible uh we only see your screen anshuman we cannot see your presentation you can't see the presentation i have shared it already have you shared your screen right now well i did uh mm -hmm. could you see that no no we don't see your uh, presentation yet this time i'll see and this time Is it visible now? Yes, we can see your screen. You can go full screen and start. The presentation is it visible now? Yes, we can see it. Please. All right, please. thank you. All uh, thank you, Nishan. Thank you to Vishnu in the Nadi Foundation for this opportunity. Um, I will share uh, our experiences on you know water use efficiency enhancement in the power plants that we have uh, you know audited. um the presentation has largely the structure of you know you know our different experiences of water audits with thermal power plants and uh, a lot of what is shared actually uh, in a very a traits what are the kinds of opportunity that exist uh, i will talk about two larger aspects of you know how to enhance the use efficiency in thermal power plants and also uh, the case of waste water reuse uh, just briefly this is what we do a uh, whole range of activity that we do in in water uh, division of tel uh, we do a lot of water audits for various industrial sectors uh, you know help improve their water use efficiency uh, we do it for cities to improve their water consumption improve their water management we do it for rural sector both in terms of uh, uh, water supply and demand management uh, we have helped you know them into you know drinking water provision as in hygiene we do a lot of water conservation intervention designing in all ground implementation as you can see water and climate change a uh, lot of pollution related studies and a lot of focus that we have is on waste water recycling and reuse and resources recovery as well uh, we do a lot of third party assessments to help you know different entities improve their water efficiency and we share our knowledge through training programs and uh, you know sharing our information with different kinds of forum in our water forum so something that we organize like what you are doing over here and we share our experiences with wide range of stakeholders um 
we have talked we have seen a bit of you know uh, um, background also already on what is kind of water challenges that we are facing why it is important to you know really optimize uh, you know the water use and and move towards you know resource recovery and you know wastewater recycling and use you know the the place where we are placed in in south asian region uh, you know, we have very less water resources and we have very high population the reason why we have only reached into a water stress state uh, talking about the industrial water use in general, we look into uh, the perspective that there's a lot of water demand, you know, increase already that has happened uh, over a period of time uh, in the industrial sector. And what we already know is uh, we still do not have a very, uh, you know, efficient water use uh, by our industrial sector. And there's a significant scope of how we can improve the water use efficiency in various sectors. Power plants, of course, uh, the largest consuming sector, uh, have immense opportunity. The wastewater that is generated out of various sources, uh, one of the reasons why we see pollution across our, you know, the streams and water bodies is that, you know, we are not able to manage our wastewater. And that's one of the challenges uh, that actually is in the water sector. Uh, various, uh, you know, data is that, you know, we are seeing various level of, you know, pollution continued uh, in our water bodies. Um, as, as recent as 2018, government posted still tell you know, that we are continuing to have you know, uh, various locations in, across uh, our water bodies which are polluted. Uh, a significant uh, waste a portion of the wastewater is basically uh, finding way uh, into water bodies untreated and therefore requires attention. So is the case in our country as well. And um, although it's not very, really, uh, you know, latest data, but that's the available latest data, frankly speaking. But it tells us, you know, that a significant volume of what we are generating, we are not able to treat, you know, and, and the treatment is just around around 37%, 40%. And therefore, the opportunity to you know look into this as an aspect of improving water management. Uh, we have water mission, which uh, you know identifies you know increasing water use efficiency as one of its goal through you know various interventions, including recycling reuse of wastewater and audits, uh, conducting mandatory audits. Uh, for those of you who probably may not be very versed with the water and power sector, I mean. Uh, uh, the what is known already is that you know we have a significant volume of water discharged by industries and out of that uh, roughly around 80 percent is the you know cooling water discharge from the power plants and uh, also historically the background is that you know power plants consume a lot much amount of water as compared to the developed nations i mean recently the ministry of power basically amended the tariff policy uh, and mandated the power plants within 50 kilometers of the stp to use the treated sewage water from the stps and uh, what was known till 2018 was that uh, of this, of uh, only around 1179 mld of STP water was available to thermal power plants, of which around only 250 mld of STP water currently utilized. If you compare it to the, you know, um, what is the amount of water totally available in India to the power plants within 50 kilometers, it just falls around 1%. So uh, while there are limitations, there are opportunities as well. Uh, not only looking at this as one of the solutions, but within the industry as well, there's a huge amount of water to basically recycle and use and become moved towards zero discharge. Uh, and I'll share that example, this is the water audience that we have. What is also known is, you know, a lot of these power plants who are, you know, uh, located in our country are basically located in, into water stress regions, almost around 40%. This is a WRI report. Uh, and this is something which is very, very uh, concerning because in future, if the water is not available, and we already have examples in various power plants over a period of time, uh, from time to time rather, you know, where they have shut down their operations and incurred significant amount of power and monetary losses because just of non-availability of water. So uh, I think this is where, why we need to be more efficient on water use. So what needs to be done basically is to look into a very comprehensive approach of en enhancing the water use efficiency, reducing our wastage, moving towards resource recovery, improving the water use efficiency and productivity as well. And also focusing on uh, conservation, recycling, reuse, maybe zero discharge or move towards water positive state. And this is required in every sector, including industries and in particular thermal power plants because they are uh, consuming almost 80% of the water. Uh, we have had, as I said, a lot of audits done in various sectors and I want to share the experience that we have with the power plants. Uh, so, uh, the, we have done a lot of audits and what we do in that particular, you know, exercise is we look into various, uh, you know, entities of water usage within the power plant, you know, water use system, which includes the raw water, the clarified water, DM water, drinking water system, but larger amount of water basically in power plants is consumed at cooling systems and ash and system. 
Uh, we look into the overall water consumption, you know, flow measurements, you know, the water quality assessment, look into the perspective of cycle of concentration, specific water consumption, identify if there are any leakage losses, and identify the scope for improvement in water conservation as well as the reduction in water usage. Um, now, those of you who may not be very versed with the power consumption, uh, let's say water usage in, in power plants, uh, water is basically used to generate steam and which, which moves the turbine to generate electricity. Steam is generated in boilers, and this water, which is uh, after moving in the steam, which is after moving the turbines, basically is condensed, and this is basically taken back to the you know boiler system, which actually gets the water from the DM plant, a very purified form of water. The condensation process requires cooling water, uh, which is coming from cooling system, and largely it is in recycler uh, closed you know cycle water recirculation. In some cases, earlier it used to be in open circulation as well. Uh, the Cooling systems have significant amount of water which goes as evaporative losses and drift losses. And this is the losses are made up from fresh water sources, which comes from various you know, sources, surface or groundwater, but largely surface water. And this is basically treated first and then used for various purposes uh, in the plant uh, for drinking systems, ash and leak systems, you know, uh, firefighting and coal handling, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, what we did was we uh, audited this particular power plant, which then was the largest uh, you know, capacity power plant of the country. Uh, and they have various stages. I will not go into details of this, but what I just showed to you in terms of the water consumption areas, uh, they had such you know, three stages when we audited them. So all these three stages, we established the you know, water supply network, identified the locations you know, where the flow measurement was needed, also the water quality assessment, and in all of these stages, uh, you know, we established the you know, complete picture of what is the consumption versus, you know, uh, actual usage, et cetera, et cetera, with different uh, kind of processes of what we use. And as you have already seen in some of the previous presentation, um, a significant volume of water basically is consumed in the thermal power plants, is consumed in the cooling systems and ash and system, roughly around 50% and 30% respectively. And uh, there are other consumption which happens, uh, for example, the firefighting. Um, no, essentially, the firefighting doesn't really uh, accurately uh, represent it. Uh, I mean, firefighting water is only supposed to be there if there is an incidence of fire. But then, you know, various uh, hydrants of fire are basically used for cleaning and, and other purposes in the power plants. Uh, then, of course, DM water, drinking water, and other usages. Now, when we audited, what we found was that the actual overall specific water consumption in the power plant was around uh, between 4.8 to 5 meter cube per megawatt. Uh, and what we, uh, you know, set a target for the power plant was that you can reduce it to, you know, around 3 meter cube per megawatt. How? Uh, largely, uh, one of the major intervention was to look into the various, uh, you know, discharges from the drain uh, of the plant, which was going unused, you know, uh, from the system. And discharge, you know, if you can see, uh, almost yeah, about 18 percent of the intake water, around 64,000 meter cube per day of water, basically was getting out of the system uh, as as waste. Now, those of you who understand the you know water quality chemistry, uh, the TDS of this water was around 150, 200, 250. I mean, uh, if if you will have to install a treatment system to bring the TDS to that level, and uh, it requires a fair amount of you know capital investment as well. So if we can somehow make use of this water with a minimal amount of treatment suiting to our reuse, reuse, uh, uh, reuse uh, requirement, we can actually benefit from the you know, uh, water saving. And this is one of the major intervention, I think, in not only thermal power plants, but most of the industries uh, and other sectors as well. Um, now, you probably most of you know that the power plants have a significantly huge amount of township establishment. And a considerable amount of water is consumed in the townships as well. Now, what we found was that the per capita consumption in the township was around 1,500, you know, and, and this could be LPC, liters per capita per day. Now, the norms for the urban setup is around 135 LPC. And what we found was if we are able, even if we are wanting to be lavish and we, if we want to supply around 350 LPC of water, even then we'll be able to save, you know, around 13,000 meter cube per day of treated water. Although it's a bit difficult because you know uh, changing human behavior takes time, but initiation in that direction would really help uh, in townships of the power plants. Now these are some of the visuals. Uh, I have to appreciate the you know power plant for allowing us to you know audit and basically taking an audit on themselves because only if you take audit you will realize what are the opportunities for improvement. And these are just the areas where you see the leakage losses and overflows you know in in the water treatment system 
in the cooling systems, cooling towers. This is ash handling system overflow. This is ash tank, basically the overflow from the ash tank. This is the ash handling pipelines, uh, which carry the slurry, you know, slurry to the ash tank. And if you can see, there are significant amount of leakages which happens from this system. Now, um, what we found was we established a water balance for the entire system. And what we found was that the plant was consuming around 380,000 meter cube per day of water. And out of that water, you know, significant volume was basically you know, being lost from you know, leakages and uh, various other you know, kind of you know, uh, uh, observation on wastage of water. Uh, this is what you can see is the consumption balance. And what we found was around, as I said earlier, a significant volume of water was also being discharged and treated, uh, you know, sorry, discharged from the drains after treatment, of course. Um, now, what we, we, we identified as potential for water saving was in, in various areas by plugging leaks, by reducing, uh, by reducing the uh, CT specific water consumption, by increasing the cycle of concentration COCs. Uh, rationalizing township water and of course uh, you know recycling and reusing the you know wastewater which was uh, going out of the drain a combination of all of these uh, we found that there could be significant areas of water conservation uh, the re the water could be reused in uh, you know um, water for boiler auxiliary uh, ash handling water had a significant vol you know opportunity to reduce uh, the water consumption uh, the losses were quite high as you can see 50 to 80% and this could be, you know, basically reduced uh, through, you know, recycle, plugging the leakages, etc. One of the major intervention in the power plants is about, you know, increasing the cycle of concentration. Uh, what we identified was that this particular plant could be, you know, bringing the water uh, in this, the specific water consumption to around 1.5 meter cube per megawatt. Overflows must be checked, of course. Uh, reduction in the township per capita water consumption and recycling of the wastewater amongst, you know, significant uh, opportunities for water conservation. Uh, also, the STP discharge from the township could also be uh, reused, uh, you know, ensuring a zero discharge. Uh, this is a graph which shows, you know, uh, the opportunities in different sectors, different areas of water usage. And as you can see, uh, significant volume of water, uh, you know, could be saved from uh, just wastewater recycling and, and reuse. And overall, what we identified that the plant could reduce roughly by around 61, 60, 61% of water by uh, various interventions identified. Now, we also in the process, you know, design a recycling system for the you know, power plant. And uh, what we identified was uh, overall, uh, there was an immediate saving potential of around, you know, 23% of the total intake water. Uh, our general experience of water audits with different power plants is that, you know, they have around 18 to 26% you know, of water saving opportunity, immediate interventions. Uh, and overall, of course, was much higher uh, in terms of uh, water saving potential. As I showed you earlier, uh, around 60-65% of the total intake water could be actually saved. Uh, the cost benefit of, benefit of the recycling system that we designed uh, was positive, and of course, they had a payback period of which was less than three years. Anything which is less than three years is quite attractive in you know financial terms. Uh, and there was, of course, significant financial saving as well as a result of this particular intervention. Now, uh, what I'm happy to share with you is uh, the particular plant basically uh, took up after the audit, you know, they took up the, you know, um, recommendations and they called us after some time and uh, asked us to, you know, audit again and see where they have reached in terms of, you know, um, water conservation. And what I'm happy to tell you that based on the recommendations and of course their initiatives over a period of time in various areas, they were able to save around a lakh 21,000 meter cube per day of water. Uh, by by a combination of the intervention that I uh, uh, that I shared with you earlier, and this time when we audited, we again found that there are further ways of you know uh, of, you know further enhancing the entire process and you know achieving a better you know even better water use efficiency. And uh, um, as you can see, uh, from 4.85 they reached around 3.21 meter cube per megawatt, uh, almost 33 percent you know improvement. And this time we set them a benchmark of around 2.3. Meter cube per megawatt. So this is a cyclic process. This is a process where you continuously, you know, audit yourself. It's like a health checkup. You improve your, uh, you you get your health uh, checked up by, by by various parameters, and over a period of time, you know, you improve your health and keep on, you know, checking uh, the status. Uh, as you can see, there was significant amount of water which was saved in different areas: cooling system, ash handling system, you know, saving from the leakage losses. Uh, and also the wastewater uh, and the potential, if you, if you look into uh, the overall, uh, was quite significant. Um, and uh, it was also associated with significant volume uh, amount of you know, financial saving. 
Uh, we have a publication on this. Uh, if some of you are interested, you know, you can actually uh, go through. There are various details of what I'm sharing with you right now. Uh, we have done, as I said, uh, several power plants uh, in, in, the, in the country. Uh, and uh, this is just a shape, you know, the range of, uh, you know, um, achievable specific water consumption, uh, which we found in various, uh, you know, power plants. Um, and uh, in general, what we, uh, you know, would say that the, if I divide the, you know, opportunity into short term and long term intervention uh, for water uh, reduction, specific water reduction, specific water consumption reduction, I think in the short term, uh, ash handling system improvement, uh, recyclation, which will be increased, uh, has a significant all, I know, opportunity, increasing the cycle of concentration. Initially, you can go up to five or six. But there are examples who, we, who, who I, I am told that they are even higher than six, and uh, that is achievable. And of course, the reuse of wastewater. And uh, by these interventions, you can save a you know, significant amount of water. Uh, and as you can see, um, with various plants that we have audited, the potential is quite significant in, in uh, different capacities uh, uh, that we have audited. Uh, in the long term, uh, what we can do is switch from wet ash handling to dry ash handling. A lot many power plants are already doing that. Uh, and also uh, shifting from conventional and wet cooling to dry cooling systems where possible. Of course, this is not easy. I'm aware in our country, uh, temperature is a big problem. But uh, wherever possible in cool areas, if this is an intervention which makes uh, uh, you know, cost benefit and economic you know, uh, feasibility, then possibly it can be done. Uh, I'm aware this uh, impacts the plant, plant load factor, but as I said, wherever possible. Uh, and in the long term and short term, if you combine, then the overall specific water consumption reduction is quite significant. Uh, so the opportunity for thermal power plants is, I'm, if I'm to summarize, I think, uh, as I said, uh, there's a significant opportunity to uh, reduce the water consumption in ash water handling by recycling. Um, and ash handling, recycle, and reuse of water can, can be done for various purposes, including within the system for dust suppression, coal, coal stacking yard, gardening, firefighting, etc. But uh, handling to dry ash handling, of course, would be a, a good intervention. Uh, although there are not many once through systems now, but those which are possibly should be you know, quickly shifted to the closed cycle system with higher number of COCs. And COCs in general should be increased, and I think that's where a significant opportunity lies. Uh, which can be done through chemical treatment, anti-sludging, anti-sepsis, acidification, periodic maintenance. All of these, you know, those who are operating the cooling towers, they, they are very well versed with this. And they are feasible, you know, uh, intervention. Wastewater, I would say, really is a good intervention to be uh, focused on as well, along with the uh, COCs, cooling systems and national systems. And besides the treatment, the water should be focused for uh, recycling reuse within the system. And uh, the plants can be, you know, um, aiming towards zero discharge or water positive. Um, the fire hydrant, you know, we have generally observed, you know, uh, they're used for sanitary purposes, but then uh, ideally it's uh, meant for firefighting. So wherever uh, it should be left to that. Uh, I would emphasize, uh, you know, the regular water audits to be one of the key things to improve the water use efficiency in the power plants, uh, for that matter, any system. Um, if that can be internalized within the corporate water policy, I think that would be a wonderful thing to do. Uh, because this will, over a period of time, benefit all the kind, all the industries and all the power plants for sure. Uh, what we also identified was automation uh, should could be introduced in in, uh, in the power plants and for that matter in industries by and large with a centralized control system and MIS system, which can definitely improve. What we have observed by automation, may you know, automation there's a significant uh, you know around 15 to 30 percent. Uh, uh, you know, amount of water that uh, actually otherwise lost into the system from as leakage losses or other, uh, you know, um, wastages from the system can be actually uh, controlled very efficiently by automation. So in terms of the way forward, I would say, uh, you know, we must aim for industry water use efficiency and reducing water footprint by and large. Uh, what I shared was uh, opportunities within the boundaries of the industries, but over a longer period of time, I think the industries should look into their value chain as well. And I think uh, with the value chain approach with your raw materials and the entities who are supplying you the raw material, there's an uh, entire opportunity of you know, reducing the water consumption for the product that you are uh, you know, basically generating. Um, of course, this, is, this will start with the corporate water policy, integrated water management strategies, advanced and efficient technologies to be used for improving the efficiency and the productivity of water, and of course, focusing on uh, you know wastewater treatment, recycling, and reuse. 
um, but, and also a reduction in the specific water consumption. This also would, uh, you know, assist in the national water mission goals, uh, which, as I, which I showed earlier. Uh, in terms of the policy intervention within the industry as well, one should target for, you know, benchmarks. We are already working on, you know, establishing benchmarks. Those of you who would like to share, uh, this is, uh, you know, Ministry of Water Resources National Water Mission Project. Uh, we are compiling information on the best practices within the sector. Uh, power plants are one of them. If you do have something which is in the current context very useful as an intervention or a technology which can be used for establishing the benchmark, please feel free to share with us. I also want to you know uh, share with you all through this platform that uh, we are also uh, ready to uh, where power plants we have already done it, but then we are ready to audit any other sector. You know, for example, the steel or pulp or paper or textile, uh, free of cost uh, as part of that project. And uh, the idea is to look into that benchmarks, which can assist the uh, industries, uh, respective sectors to improve the water use efficiency. Uh, and, and what I'm trying to also share with you is the best practices uh, should also be shared, uh, you know, amongst within. So for example, those are the power plants who are basically doing quite well, should share their information and uh, technical know-how and best practices to others to improvise the sectoral water use efficiency. Um, and I, I cannot emphasize more the water audits to be one of the key, uh, you know, uh, interventions to improve the water efficiency. Uh, besides, we should also support the regional water management to maybe in the watershed where you are placed uh, to not only, you know, mitigate the risks associated with the water availability, but also to sustainably manage the water together with a participatory approach. I think it's, it's good to, you know, uh, work under the CSR mode. Uh, we have had several uh, corporates in you know ocean management and and the local communities involving the local communities which has benefited both the community and the you know industry as well of course supporting nationwide programs and uh, uh, you know would really be a uh, thing which corporate can really do beyond what they can do within the boundaries uh, i talked about automation already and uh, one last thing that i want to mention is that industries should take a scientific water vulnerability assessment in the context of regional water scenarios you know because Many times what happens, as I, sh I shared with you earlier, is many power plants have you know, faced water shortages and therefore uh, the services were disrupted and they incurred financial losses. It's very important to look into the carrying capacity of the region and potential risk for you to operate in a particular watershed. So the vulnerability of water assessment, uh, water in your region must be assessed for your uh, long-term planning perspective, ex expansion perspectives, etc. All right, I'll stop here. Uh, thank you for the opportunity again. And uh, if there are any questions, I'll be happy to take them uh, as and when it is possible. Thank you. Thank you, Anshwin, uh, for your uh, presentation. Uh, as of now, we don't have any uh, questions. But uh, I ask uh, and request the participants, in case you have any questions, to raise your hands as speakers are here to help answer all your questions. Anshwin, I request you to please uh, stop sharing your screen and uh, then we will go to our next uh, speaker we have uh, mr sam uh, mr sam devdas head of department jstw group who is going to be giving us his presentation next and i think he has a co-presenter with him uh, mr hanuman Rao as well mr devdas i request you to please uh, unmute yourself uh, we can see your screen uh, but we cannot hear you yet. Yeah. Yes. Yes, please go ahead, Mr. Yes. Yeah. Good afternoon, uh, ma'am, and uh, uh, the jury committee, as well as my peer uh, uh, organizations. So, uh, I am uh, Sam Devadas uh, from uh, JSW Energy Vijayanagar, and along with me, my team is there, Mr. Uh, uh, Anumant Rao. So now, this is a flow of presentation, uh, our journey towards excellence, and our business overview, and uh, what are the awards and uh, accolades, and the planned uh, unique features, and uh, what are the contributions towards environment and water management, and what is the green initiatives uh, through the use of wastewater. So uh, ours is a plant which is located at uh, Vijayanagar, which is a mother plant uh, of JSW Group, JSW Energy Group, which is uh, we have started uh, in the year 1994. 
and with the name of uh, uh, General Tractable Power Company Limited, uh, with a capacity of two into one thirty megawatt. And uh, uh, next, uh, uh, the thing is that we have used uh, we are using uh, the gas which has been a byproduct of uh, the neighboring uh, steel plant. So that uh, the power plant is uh, started for uh, using utilizing this uh, uh, byproduct gas or the waste gas which has been uh, used and which has we have started and after that in the due course of time we actually we have grown up along with the scenarios in uh, the capacity additions also started so we have been grown uh, again in 2005 we added 100 megawatt into our kitty with the uh, use of this waste gas and again in uh, 2005 another 130 megawatt this is also purely of using this blast furnace gas and again, uh, we have, we have uh, changed our name to JSW Energy Limited from uh, JTPCL. So in 2006, we started uh, addition of uh, 300 megawatt into four. So while the first phase, which started in 2009, and uh, the next phase of 300 megawatt, we have commissioned in 2012. So this is our uh, journey from uh, uh, mere uh, 200 and one minute. So 260 to 60, 90. And uh, with the addition uh, of our uh, uh, commitment from our top management uh, of being uh, a green power uh, in 2050. So uh, we, have, say, we have started uh, a 225 megawatt solar plant. So started means almost we are going to commission by uh, end of uh, December. So which is in uh, another uh 1400 megawatt of wind uh, also in pipeline so this is our business for you so we are having uh our jsw energy we are having two into one megawatt and two into 300 megawatts this 860 megawatt belongs to jsw energy and 830 megawatt uh which is of captive plant where we are uh, doing a wind business and uh, all these uh plants which are using uh both uh coal as well as gas so gas we have been used as a additional re retrofitting into our uh, system so uh, instead of flaring out we have been uh, using this with this uh, we are able to generate about 10% uh, of uh, the generation of each unit so these are few of the awards we got from uh, recognition the view of recognition from CAI uh, for our sustainability approach as well as from uh, our green rating project uh, from uh, Center for Science and Environment and Srishti Gold Award, Srishti Award for the uh, Good Green Governance. And these are uh, uh, the uh, collects we received from uh, uh, Ministry of Power. Uh, consecutively, we have been recognized for our meritorious performance since 2006 to 2014. So consecutively, either one or the other, the 130 megawatt plant as well as the 300 megawatt plants were recognized for their meritorious performance. So, and we have been in helm in 2012 till uh, 2014, the all PLF uh, rankings. So, sorry, 2002, uh, uh, 2012, 2012, 2013, we have been uh, uh, in the all India PLF rankings. So, these are the unique features. Uh, this uh, the recognition from Ministry of Power, and we are having an integrated uh, management system which is comprising of uh, ISO 9000, ISO 14001, and uh, OJAS. And uh, in addition to it, uh, the energy management system, which is certified by TV NOT. This uh, and uh, this auxiliary power consumption, which is one of the best of uh, uh, the peers. And uh, uh, we have been optimizing the auxiliary power consumption in part load operation also because nowadays, uh, because of uh, the development of renewables or uh, the interference of renewables the plants were uh, uh, operating in part load so even in part load operation we are being competitive so uh, we have been competitive in the market so uh, with this our auxiliary power consumptions are even uh, at the same as that of what we are maintaining in full load that is we are able to by means of the best op uh, operation practices we are able to optimize our auxiliary power consumption part load also in 7%, which is very well uh, below the limits. And uh, the waste gas from steel plant is used for the power generation. Uh, so especially in our um, 
one that if I got plant which we are using 100% gas as well as 100% coal, it can be used. But presently, we are using about 40 to 40% of generation through the gas byproduct gas, and uh, the other 300 megawatt units actually we are using about 10% of uh, the gen uh, power generation is done by uh, the waste gas. And uh, flare has been used by the 100% uh, by the cement industries and the local brick manufacturing units. So it has been uh, utilized uh, 100%. So uh, thereby, actually, with the conservation of water also played a very key role. And uh, read by uh, sewage treatment system, which is in place, especially we are using uh, the wastewater, uh, especially for our, uh, we are using reusing for our uh, gardening as well as uh, DSS systems, the suppression systems. So regarding concerns, uh, complaints towards environment uh, concern. So uh, the filings are uh, done periodically, especially, especially this easy compliances, as well as the environment statement compliance and uh, this uh, complaints to the disposal of batteries as well as e-waste. So, and the filing of this ash returns periodically. So these are the few of status of compliances. And best achieved, best achieved uh, uh, KPIs, especially the specific raw water consumption, we have achieved the best, which is 2.1 meter cube per megawatt, which is well within the limit. And we have done an internal benchmarking of 1.9. So the specific uh, DM water consumption, uh, which is of 0.5% uh, at uh, TMCR condition, and we have achieved 0.46, which is nothing but uh, the water which we are using for the makeup of our uh, cycle, uh, uh, which is well uh, below our uh, peers, peers. And the specific coal consumption, which is 0.38, which is excluding uh, gas also, we are able to maintain this 0.38 uh, kg per kilowatt hour. And uh, CO2 emissions, uh, which is of 0.88 uh, kg per kilowatt hour, and specific emissions from stack actually, which is of the range of 50 to 65. And flare ash utilization, we are uh, uh, continuously we are maintaining 100% utilization, especially uh, whenever uh, uh, almost our uh, uh, ash been utilized by the local uh, manufacturers, brick manufacturers. And majorly, it has been taken by the cement industries. And there is no non-complaints. Non and uh, uh, these are some operational measures. Uh, we are especially using this uh, use of imported uh, low ash, uh, low, sulfur, low sulfur coal. And uh, before we are procuring uh, any coal, uh, before that, it will be assessed by an internal team. Uh, especially for its ash percentage as well as for the uh, sulfur content in the coal. So any coal which is uh, ha having a sulfur content of 0.6% uh, and above, we are not been uh, going for a procurement as well as the ash content which is less than 15% uh, actually we are not taking into for a purchase. And uh, utilization of byproduct waste gas, this, as I explained already, uh, we have been uh, conserving about 1 lakh tons of coal on a year yearly basis. Then 100% of utilization of fly ash and this read bed system utilization and RO, RO based effluent, effluent recycling. So, RO based effluent recycling, especially what we are having, we are having two RO skits, especially it has been uh, um, taken for because earlier we used to letting out the blowdown, we and it is mainly used for uh, war beneficiation purpose. Later on, this uh, because we are having this performance optimization groups, which has been. Uh, uh, and then within within our uh, plan, so for each KPIs, a, a separate performance monitoring group has been assigned. So it's a branch of uh, uh, the performance optimization group of the water conservation team. So they have been come out with a good idea, even though the ROI was initially at a higher stage. Later on, actually, we have been reaping the results. So uh, we are able, we are uh, uh, for uh, for about. Uh, this 1690 megawatt, we are having a blowdown of about 3500 to 4000 meter cube per day. So, in this, uh, uh, we are treating that water uh, through this RO plants. So, and this RO plant, whatever the water being treated, we have been uh, reusing back into our uh, uh, CD basins. And that is, we have been using for our uh, CW makeup. So, uh, in future, actually, we are, we are having a plan of using this uh, treated permeate. 
uh, on the substitute of our DM plant, DM plant input. So that actually our DM plant intake of raw water will be getting reduced. And rainwater harvesting for uh, utilization, we have been uh, as a uh, rainfall of about 600 mm. So uh, we are we able to harvest about uh, 2000 to 2500 uh, meter cube of water per year. And this also been used for our uh, city basin uh, or uh, circulating water uh, makeup. And uh, use of low NOx burners, especially uh, uh, we are uh, even uh, we are using gas. Gas varying means actually the more convective heat actually it will uh, emit. So we are having the overfire air dampers. So by use of this, this we are avoiding this uh, NOx emissions at the very firing stage or the earlier stage. These are some of the best operational measures. And uh, this uh, conveys uh, from uh, uh, from uh, the beginning of our yard. That is from the yard till our uh, gantry um, of our uh, uh, bunker bunker floor. It has been fully uh, covered as well as uh, we have installed at back filters at a particular locations as well as the dust extraction and dust separation systems are there at the strategic points. And uh, one, uh, this is one of the modifications what we have been executed. This uh, uh, this igniters, especially while we are using for this oil firing. So there earlier we used to use LPG as a primary fuel. So that has been re replaced with a HA igniter. So which has uh, uh, much eliminate much helped in uh, uh, eliminate the safety hazard as well as use of this LPG. So this is a typical of our utilization of, of uh, ash. So the bulkers from uh, cement industries, they have been uh, uh, taken. And uh, because actually while we are uh, entry as well as exit, there will be water curtains will be there. So that actually the emissivity of this flash will be avoided. So these are the environmental parameter complaints. Our uh, suspended particulate matter, uh, especially uh, even though the limits by MOEF it is hundred, it is a even it is a twenty year old plant. We are able to achieve about thirty five to fifty five mg per nm cube, and uh, our uh, SBU two means strategic business unit two, the three hundred megawatt into two two units. Actually, we are able to the emission emission is within sixty to seventy five, and uh, uh, socks. So Sulfur also it is maintained within limits and uh, NOx limits also it is between 400 in a uh, strategic business unit one that is 130 megawatt and uh, 350 in 300 megawatt units and specific water consumption even though it is a 130 megawatt unit we are able to achieve about 2.2 meter cube per megawatt hour and uh, there in SBU2 it is about 2.1 meter cube per megawatt hour. So uh, the water management, one of this major thing, we, we recently installed some uh, drift eliminators in cooling towers, especially this uh, earlier the drift eliminators, what are we used, which is having uh, high drift loss. So we have been uh, thought of using a um, anti-clogging uh, trickle grid uh, type of fills, especially the fills what we are having there, because as it is uh, adjacent to the neighboring steel plant, it is more prone to uh, dusty at atmosphere. So there is a chance of this clogging of uh, uh, CT fills is very frequent. So after a prolonged study, I think we uh, come, at, come out with a uh, idea of uh, installing of uh, hybrid uh, uh, anti-clogging uh, CT cooling tower fills with a drift eliminator, uh, with a drift eliminators, which is uh, considerably reduce the drift losses. So, and uh, the side stream filters, side stream filters of CW system, we have been optimized the operation. Earlier, the back flushing uh, time, uh, we used to uh, consume water. The time optimization we have done, earlier actually it is a time based. After that, actually, we are based on the turbidity of the water, we used to do this, uh, the back flushing of side stream filters. And uh, uh, fly ash conditioning, uh, earlier actually we used to use a conditioned ash. So as the ash been uh, used totally, so the um, it has been utilized fully in a dry form. So the conditioned ash, it has been reduced very much and thereby the 
water 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 consumption and coc the operating band it has been uh, raised from that's you and uh, the question of uh, fire water pipeline uh, especially we used to what earlier it used to be done so the whenever there is a leak was there we we need to wait for uh, the digging of that area and uh, by the time a considerable amount of water been left out so uh, we we done in a phased manner totally about uh, uh, the total network of about uh, 3 km network of fire water um, which has been uh, brought in uh, above ground so uh, it is done in a phased way and uh, uh, ct blowdown cooling tower blowdown what it has been as a trial basis it has been uh, uh used for the fire water uh, network and uh, it has been successfully we have been periodically testing this fire water uh, parameters uh, in order to avoid any rusting in the pipeline so that has been done and uh, we are successfully using this uh, roughly about we are able to uh, conserve a water of about 6000 meter cube per month due to this modification and uh, effluent recycling we are uh, using for the local gardening purpose and uh, reuse of this is uh, uh, in in continuation to the water 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 management so uh, reuse of uh, uh, dm plant uh, filter and ultra water uh, uf uh, backwash uh, water this generally we used to divert to a uh, yeah, neutralizing pit and we used to take to after treatment now actually as the water quality is better actually we are using the ct basin itself which is conserving about 250 meter cube of water per day and uh, optimization of uh, boiler blowdown boiler blowdown especially we are uh, what we are doing earlier uh, we used to do on a day to day basis uh, day to day in a shift wise we used to operate this boiler blowdown for about 6 hours so later on uh, we have seen the parameters instead of doing doing it in a customary way so we are doing uh, uh, once in a week we are doing for 2 hours so uh, the water quality is also it is maintaining well so the silica levels are within limit so uh, we are uh, by this the water the water has been conserved in a very yes uh, especially the cycle backup has been reduced very much so this avt treatment it is in progress so this will eliminate the ingress of uh, uh, dissolved solids that is in progress now so this is a third party assessment it has been done by uh, uh, center for science and environment so this uh, and we uh, received the award for uh, the better water uh, optimization so the global uh, uh, water usage it has been given uh, india the total it has been the data has been given by produced by csc so uh, in in we have uh, jwel tonagalo has been recognized uh, as the best uh, water optimizing plant the year uh, 14 15 15 16 so uh, we have been uh, received the three leaves award so this has been done after the rigorous assessment of uh, some 60 key parameters and they have approached the local uh, ngos also for collecting the data and they approached the pollution control boards and some legal uh, statutory bodies and the rti uh, groups they and they have done their own assessment this uh, assessment has been done and uh, they have come out with this uh, outcome so these are some of the snaps of our uh, fluent recycling plant we are having this is what i have spelled out earlier we are having two ro kits uh, uh, which is having each of Uh, having a treatment capacity of 150 meter cube per hour so this we are using deliberately for our uh, treatment of uh, circulating water blow down and we are using it back so this in future actually we are planning for using into our dm plant intake so which we are expecting that uh, the uh, raw water usage uh, presently it is 1.85 uh, uh, this meter cube of raw water which is required for uh, per meter cube of uh, dm water so which we are expecting that it will come down to 1.25 so this rain water harvesting so this anyway we are uh, uh, especially the roof drains of uh, tg floor as well as the boiler uh, uh, roof floors drains actually we are collecting into a uh, basin and we are using for it 
and this read bed system we are having two setups like this and one is of uh, 20 kld another one is of 30 kld and we are uh, using this for our greenery and especially the coming photos actually what are the greenery development it has been done because of this so these are uh, uh, some of these uh, shots in our uh, uh, entry into our uh, plant uh, so all this greenery development we are uh, been uh, doing through uh, part by the ro rejects the water actually what we are doing, taking from the ro reject uh, the next one actually we are using the reed bed water so these are some of these snaps and uh, excellence is a journey not a destination thank you thank you for the mission energy team thank you mr deitas uh, for your presentation i uh, request you to please stop your presentation um so uh, what we are seeing right now is that some of the questions have come into the chat box and uh, uh some you know questions have been answered there uh if any of the participants want to ask a question to the speakers please raise your hand i will uh, take you onto the stage and then you can ask your questions directly to our speakers who are still with us um as of now there is one question uh that is uh, coming on what is the hardness level in the raw water so that is a question mr vijay tiwari has asked i want to know who is the speaker uh perhaps uh, mr devdas the question was addressed to you what is the hardness in the level of the raw water uh in fact the hardness level earlier what we are getting uh, it was uh, because our water source is from uh, a, uh, the treated water treated means it's a river water what we are getting so um, uh, we are we are using from two rivers one is from tungabhadra another one is almati so uh, earlier we used to get a hardness of about uh, it is less than 100 whenever actually we are getting the total water content from uh, this tungabhadra dam and now actually we are getting from almati dam the hardness it has been going up to 160 to 180 and in uh, especially in the uh, peak summers this uh, going uh, to 200 plus all right uh, so i think uh, uh, the question has been answered uh, by uh, mr dev das so i would like to uh, thank all our speakers uh, i'm not seeing any more questions that have come in and um, we've seen uh, we've got a lot of information from uh, the presentations made today on the best practices for uh, uh, conservation of water on uh, optimization of water and we're very grateful to all our speakers uh, for uh, coming in today and giving us the presentations big thank you to all of you uh, we are going to take a short break at this point of time in fact uh, we'll go in for lunch and we will return at 2 pm with uh, more sessions uh, and uh, information uh, when we are coming back we will talk about implementing efficient uh, uh, zero liquid discharge approach so this still more coming on uh, on how uh, uh, complete waste can be reduced so do join us again at 2 pm when we return post the lunch session thank you thank you thank you Thank you ma'am. Thank you ma'am. Thank you ma'am.